Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt and thank you for joining me. Before we get into today's video, let me know what your favorite anti-aircraft weapon system is, whether it be a missile, a gun, a self-propelled anti-aircraft system, vehicle, I want to know what your favorite is. Uh, my personal preference at the moment is Stinger, just because of its legacy. I mean, when you talk about anti-aircraft systems, especially man pads, Stinger is always the one that comes to mind, and it's just got so much history behind it, uh, and it's certainly a formidable anti-aircraft missile. And uh, this is certainly one of the competitors to the legacy Stinger missiles that we see very prominently coming across from the Western powers, especially that in the United States. But this particular weapon system is not exactly new, but it's not exactly old either because it's being upgraded in its capability. This is Saab's RBS 70 NG. Now, Saab are a fantastic manufacturer of weapon systems. They have a renowned capability, especially in the defense sector for Sweden. Uh, they do a very good job of producing very capable and specific weapon systems for a whole host of different opportunities, whether it be anti-aircraft, anti-tank. Um, we all know of uh, the very, very powerful uh, Saab Gripen, which uh, is a fantastic fighter jet. But the RBS 70 NG is something that I'm particularly fascinated in is because the Canadian military has just recently announced that they will actually be utilizing this as our man pads. Now, if you're not already aware, Canada does not have, at current standpoint, our own anti-air missile systems, which means that we have no capability really to protect ourselves and our ground forces uh, from um, air attack. Now, Canada did have ADATS, which was an advanced anti-aircraft weapon system, basically mounted on the back of a vehicle. Uh, it was a tracked vehicle, had a pretty sophisticated missile program that could be utilized for knocking out air targets back in the day. But it was an expensive program, and unfortunately, it just didn't meet the cut when we needed it for the longer term. With the Saab RBS-70 being a manned portable system, this can be utilized by just about anyone. And as an artillery gunner, I'm hoping potentially me. Yes, if uh, anyone's listening in the stratosphere of the Canadian Armed Forces right now, or even from Saab, please let me come play with the RBS-70 because I would absolutely love as a reservist artillery gunner to get hands on this thing. Um, but I know that's just a dream. You know, it's a pipe dream, uh, but it would be really cool to actually have a, a look at this system. I don't want to fire it particularly, but I would love to come kind of see the system uh, from Saab both as dynamics and see if I can play with this thing because I think it'd be really cool. Now, the system is obviously designed to take out aerial threats, helicopters, fixed wing aircraft, but more prominently today in the context of what's going on around the world, unmanned aerial vehicles. The RBS-70 is offering huge enhanced capabilities over predecessors. But before we get into the astounding capabilities of the new system, we need to talk a little bit about the history of the old system. Now, the illustrious journey of the RBS-70 system commenced in 1977 when it became operational with the Swedish Army boasting a formidable Mark I missile platform. Since then, it's evolved into the sophisticated Mark II and, of course, the RBS-70NG. This is still currently in production worldwide and has been exported to a multitude of different customers. Building upon this legacy, the Bolide missile emerged as the groundbreaking advancement enhancing the Mark II with a novel sustainer rocket motor, thereby significantly augmenting the missile speed and maneuverability. This innovation actually caught the eye of Australia, leading to initial order in 2003, followed by subsequent purchases in April 2004. In 2011, a new chapter unfolded with the introduction of the RBS-70NG, or New Generation System, representing a quantum leap in very short-range air defense or V-Shorad capabilities. The upgraded version, the RBS-70NG, made its grand debut at the Defense and Security Equipment International Exhibition in September 2011. With operational deployment across 19 countries globally, it offers a very robust static air defense for strategic assets and event protection during even peacetime, showcasing a very versatile and adaptable platform, which is very, very useful when I say peacetime because this system actually has a training program allowing you to not have to fire expensive live missiles every time you want to practice with this system, something that militaries that don't have a very strong or robust um, capability for cost to use because at the end of the day if you don't have the money to continue doing live firing of a system like this it's useless you want to have a program or a system and a training package that can allow you and your troops to utilize it whenever necessary and practice without spending a ton of money now there are 1600 rbs uh, 70 systems procured by those nations spanning five continents and its impact is pretty profound and far-reaching in what it can do against some of the legacy systems the RBS-70NG comprises of the launch container, tripod, and NG site, each meticulously designed to optimize performance and reliability. 
Noteworthy features include a midsection nozzle and sustainer motor along with a tail mounted laser beam riding system, rendering the missile impervious to jamming attempts. Now, when we say impervious and completely, you know, enable to be hacked or jammed, um, I don't agree. There's always something that can be utilized to go against systems like this. However, beam riding missiles are very, very good at being able to engage targets without interruption. That does not mean, though, that they have without their own faults. Uh, the system can be operated by a single individual with a minimal complement of three personnel for portability and practicality. For instance, if you had this system set up and you wanted to set a you know, battery of these into a wood line, you wouldn't need a whole battalion of troops to maintain them and keep them going. You could just have one guy. Impractical in its sense, because loading and operating the system is going to be a lot more difficult for one individual, especially when you're trying to maintain tracking, etc. But it can be done so, just like the Stinger and any other man pads that are out there today. But it does provide a complete v rad system, which embodies that efficiency and capability to shoot and scoot and maneuver quickly. Uh, and reload quickly too. It's actually very fast at being able to set up a new tube with its modular design, which facilitates that really seamless integration into a different types of vehicles, networks, um, even remotely controlled platforms. But let's be honest, its strengths really lie in the dismounted platform variant, where it can just be deployed just about anywhere onto that tripod system with a three-man crew carrying a few extra tubes in the siding system, deploy and off it goes. And that's what you want. You want something that can be thrown into the back of a vehicle, a truck, a lav, uh, and drop off some infantry where you need to, or artillery for that matter. <clears throat> Sorry, I nearly discredited my own trade there. Interesting. Um, but you want that. You want that deployability, that flexibility on the battlefield for man pads. You don't want something that is reliant upon uh, having a full host of logistics behind it. Taking a few spare tubes for this system is going to be very, very reliant, uh, protecting the flanks and the vulnerable areas of battle group with a system like this. And when you're looking at longer term, strategic emplacements for air defense, this certainly is not going to be the way you want to go. But that's not what you want from a system like this. You want that flexibility and versatility, and the system really provides that. And not only that, but that reliability to actually hit the target with 24-7 capability night and day with extremely good repeatability of engaging targets. This is what you want, a system that you know will actually be able to cover you if things go wrong. Some of the older legacy systems out there, the man pads, are not quite keeping up to the technological advancements of which the RBS-70NG has. Uh, and that's why it's kind of a game changer in you know modern Western anti-air aircraft uh, systems. And the systems that it has in built into it really help that. The integrated sighting system includes a thermal imager, built-in automatic target tracker, and advanced visual queuing aids. The integrated high-resolution thermal imager allows for 24-7 capability while advanced queuing improves reaction time and target acquisition for the user. The auto tracker with a manual override ensures the engagement of the target with a high hit probability over the missile range, while graphics based human machine interfaces give the advanced guidance even further enhancements to performance during manual and auto tracking engagements, basically meaning that the system's GPU and all the visual aids really help the user to track that system uh, that's flying through the air and engage it quickly without having to be overloaded with the various information that you may need to interpret to shoot. It is almost just like you see on the HUD when you're firing a missile as a fighter pilot. It is basically saying shoot. It is the same system uh, utilized in this that it's very quick and easy with that built-in video recording as well to give you almost a post-mission review. If you want to see how well the engagement went, you can see that with real-time uh, camera footage from the, uh, the image system, which I think is really, really cool. The new generation sighting system, which I couldn't find too much about, has the unjammable laser guidance, which offers that high level precision strike capability to the user and can simultaneously detect and engage multiple targets at once. Meaning if you fired at a target and the tube is empty, a new tube could be put onto the platform at the same time of you tracking a new target to allow you to fire again. Now the Bolide missile has a maximum velocity of around Mach 2 and it's combined with a shaped charge and pre-fragmented warhead that can defeat aerial targets including attack helicopters, close air support and potentially some land-based armor targets but primarily its focus is aerial targets. Now the new design also incorporates new systems including a fiber optic gyroscope and adaptable proximity view system that provides all target capability at multiple different heights, altitudes and speeds and a very high kill probability against small targets as well as the new sustainer rocket motors that provide improved performance for propellant and the new electronics inside of the system is a lot more robust. 
The new motor also gives the missile a shorter time of flight and a higher maneuverability than the older RBS-70. The laser beam riding missile can engage targets if countermeasures are used and prevent clutter environments distracting the missile. It does have a maximum shelf life around 30 years, which is something you have to take into consideration when you're looking at man pads because as I had mentioned, you don't really want to utilize all your missiles in training. So if you want to have war stores available, you want something that can be left for a long period of time in war stores. 30 years gives you lots of opportunity to pull these out of mothballing if you need them to, but not wasting them for training just because you have to fire them. The RBS-70 also can destroy targets with a maximum distance around 8,000 meters and an altitude of 5,000 meters. So we're not looking at, you know, high engagement missiles uh, that can go into the stratosphere of, you know, uh, a MiG-23 traveling at, you know, Mach 30. It's not designed for that. It's a short range missile, very, very useful for aircraft that are coming in low, such as UAVs and those attack helicopters. It can also be integrated with an identification friend or foe or IFF integrator, which allows to identify friendly targets, which in a difficult 24 seven different weather environment um, situation, you're gonna wanna have that. It can be difficult if you're you know, left to your own devices, a three man crew uh, going out into the boonies, just saying, hey, just watch out for aircraft flying in this area. There's nothing to tell you that that could not be uh, your own aircraft in the environment. So the IFF is very, very useful because the last thing you want is to be that ground crew firing on your own aircraft. The system is very compact and reprogrammable as well. So the electronic suite um, inside of this system being small and tight um, is very easy for an electronics tech to take back to, you know, third line, plug it in and reinstall software if necessary and bring it back without having to pull out all the guts of the system and, you know, you totally overhaul this thing to get it up to where you want it to be if you wanted to upgrade it. It can actually be done very quickly at first, second or third line systems. Uh, with the techs, which can give really good upgrades if there's new software capabilities, because just like anything with tech, you want something that you're going to be able to upgrade with the technology that it may be fighting. The whole system though is very quickly to deploy as well. Within about 30 seconds, you have a tube on top and a user tracking targets. The reloading for the system is less than about six seconds. So you can continually fire the system over and over with trackable aircraft in the airspace fast. And that's what you want. As I had mentioned, the system does have 24 seven all target capability and can launch in multiple different environments as well, such as the more complex environments like urban terrain, where you have, you know, uh, enclosures or areas where you don't want the tube blowing half your troops away from backblast. It is a tight system that gives a very low blowback uh, signature so that your troops can fire this without being detected from long range of the massive smoke plume. Uh, the, the missile is not, you know, kind of giving your position away. And because it can be used in all weather conditions, you have no concern about whether it's, you know, a blizzard or a rainstorm, it will be able to be utilized against the aircraft that are coming towards you or your battle group. So for me, this is a game changer. It's exciting to see a very high tech anti-aircraft man pads coming into potential uh, hands of Canadian soldiers. I think it's really exciting stuff. I would love to hear your opinion on this system. What do you think? Do you think this is all sort of bells and whistles? There's already a lot of this technology already exists. It's not, you know, fancy enough really to say it's the, the next best thing or the new generation. I personally think from the research I've done across different platforms, this is certainly probably one of the best out there. What is the best? I don't play that game. I don't know the best. I'm not a man pads expert, but from what I can tell and knowing how Saab operate, this is definitely a very good platform in the forefront of uh, you know air defense short range air defense and i'd love to hear though your opinion leave it in the comments section below thank you for joining me in today's video i cannot uh, really though i appreciate you being here i know i don't produce as much content as i used to uh, i apologize for that if you do follow me thank you um please of course as always um let me know how i'm doing in the comments and i hope you all have a wonderful day all the best bye bye